everybody, Michelle here from Quebec Cyclidé. Today I will be presenting five peaceful embunas to add to your aquarium. So stay tuned! Before we get started, I would like to take a moment to invite you to subscribe to my channel. I mainly post fish information videos and there are plenty that have been done and plenty more to come, so make sure not to miss a single one. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rochelle and I own a local fish store in Terrebonne, Quebec. That's right outside of Montreal. I'm open to the public, so if ever you are around, don't be shy to stop by. Embunas are amongst the most fascinating fish to keep in your aquarium. They're energetic, colorful, and easy to breed. They get a bad rep for being aggressive because, well, they are. Don't let this discourage you. If kept in the appropriate ratios, these fish will live harmoniously. They are the most popular African cichlid group on the market. This wouldn't be the case if they were impossible to keep. Amongst the Mbunas, there are some more aggressive species and some that are less aggressive. Here's a presentation of five of my favorite peaceful embunas. Now keep in mind that even though these embunas are technically less aggressive than their cousins, there can sometimes be a bad apple amongst them who can take over the aquarium. But this is possible for all species of embunas. So if you get one of these in your aquarium, they might be a little bit more aggressive. Labidochromis carellus is the most famous African cichlid. There are multiple regional color variations that exist for this fish, the most popular being the yellow variation. This comes from the fish that were first exported from Mboe and Lion Cove in Lake Malawi, around Lake Malawi. In the past, I've also been able to get my hands on some Labidochromis carellus and kata, uh, these are the same fish, but white instead of yellow. Their color is different depending on where they're from in the lake. Most Labidochromis species are insectivores, and those that are, are technically non-territorial nomads. This should be the case for the yellow lab because they are an omnivore, uh, but they can somewhat get territorial in the aquarium. And it's mainly because of this fish's popularity on the market these fish are domestic bred, and because of this, some of the fish might lose their original behavior. So some yellow labs have been known to become territorial, even though they technically shouldn't. But it's never really that bad. If you have problems with aggression in your tank, just check out my video on how to deal with fish bullies in the aquarium. To tail males from females apart in the yellow labs, it's practically impossible. To, even when you vent them, it's very hard to do it properly. I've noticed when venting them that uh, for the males, the body is a bit yellower around its genitals and the females will be a lighter color and in some cases white. But this isn't the case for all variants of yellow labs. Pseudotrophus ACI or ACI, like I think English speakers say it, uh, this is by far the most peaceful in Buna. They're non-territorial schooling fish. In the aquarium, their behavior might be a little bit more territorial than in the wild, but it's never as much as other pseudotrophias. There are multiple regional color variations. The ones with black bodies can have either yellow or white fins. The ones with light blue bodies generally have yellow fins. As for sexual dimorphism, um, with the black bodied fish, it's a lot easier as the male will often have some blue reflections in there whereas the female will be flat black charcoal. Uh, as for the sexual di dichromatism in the light blue species, nah, there isn't any. Your best bet is to check their dorsal fin. If they're pointy, it's male. If they're round or square, it's a female. Rusty cichlids are fascinating. They distinguish themselves from the other embunas by their colors and their shape. They're rounder than most and a rust color that none others have. The males will develop lilac colors in their bodies when they reach maturity. These cichlids aren't territorial, making them the 
perfect candidate for your peaceful cichlid aquarium. They feed off offwuch, which are little invertebrates that live in the algae. In their diet, in the aquarium, they need a lot of algae. I feed my Northland veggie formula in the morning and spirulina flakes in the evening. If you want to give them a treat, you know, once a week on Sunday, you can feed them some frozen brine shrimp, the one that comes with spirulina in the recipe. That's their favorite uh, frozen foods. So, Lavidochromis permeut in the wild is a rare species, as they can only be found in two places, Higa Reef and Mbamba Bay, at depths of 30 meters also, and this makes them a little bit harder to find on the market. This is an omnivorous Labidochromis, so their behavior is similar to the yellow Labidochromis. For colors, they are white with a yellow dorsal fin. They're so precious. The dominant male will be pearly white, whereas others will have black bars, either the females or the dominated males. They're insectivores, like I said earlier. Uh, they will eat little invertebrates off the roof of a cave in the wild. But in the aquarium, don't worry, you don't need a cave with invertebrates that they can just eat off the ceiling of. In the aquarium, they're very easy. You can just feed them omnivorous pellets, and if you have them with strict herbivore and bunas, you can also feed them the herbivore pellets and they will be fine. This is the second Labidochromis peaceful species that I am gonna mention. It's also one of the most popular and the prettiest as well. I'm not gonna look at all the peaceful ones versus all the uh, less peaceful ones. There's an easy way to know if your species of Labidochromis is peaceful or not, and it's to look at their diet. Omnivores are more peaceful than herbivores. So if you know the name of your cichlid, their species and everything, uh, you can either go to Cichlid Forum in their profiles page and just click on the link and it will tell you if they are omnivores or not, or you can check out if you have any African cichlid books or encyclopedias that could help too but you might get a lot more information than you signed up for. All right, the last one is the Cenotilapia zebroid. Uh, it used to be the Afra. They changed the name of the species a couple of years ago. So this Mbuna is a little bit more territorial than the others mentioned in this video. So I would classify it more as a semi-peaceful Mbuna. So, like I said earlier, I didn't just want a full list of Labidochromis, I wanted other species as well. In all of my experience with this fish and my client's testimonials, it has only seldom happened that this fish would be the bothersome one in an aquarium. They tend to mind their own business if they're in a good environment. They are territorial, meaning that you will have to give them some nice caves to live in and to excavate. They need that, just, it's part of what they like to do. They will protect their territory, but never bother other fish in their own homes. They'll never try to steal someone else's territory unless there's not enough in the aquarium. Now, this fish has <laughs> incredible color variations, depending on where they're from in the lake, kind of like the Caerilus labidochromis. The variation I keep at the shop depends on what's available at my suppliers. Whichever your local fish store has, they're all pretty much the same species and have similar behavior and they are all very pretty. So these are my suggestions. If you're a beginner in African cichlids, these are peaceful mbunas that you definitely want to get your hands on. There are so many on the market, but these are my favorite and the most accessible to you as well. Even though I'm showing you all these peaceful mbunas, don't let the fact that an mbuna is more aggressive deter you from getting it. If you're worried, get them in bigger schools, get them a bigger tank if that's what they need, uh, add more decorations. Don't stop yourself just because you hear one is more aggressive, unless it's the uh, Solotrophius oratus. Just don't get that one, that one is really aggressive, like do not touch that one. Not I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole, I don't even hold it in my store, like I refuse to enter it. Oh, but all the others are fine though, except that one. There's always an exception, right? That's the one, oratus. Remember that one. As for if you can mix peaceful and aggressive inbunas in the same aquarium, well, of course you can, as long as it's big enough to house all your fish. The peaceful inbunas don't look for trouble, but they hold their own. If you're having problems with aggression in your aquarium, there are plenty of tricks to help you, and I have a whole video about it, how to deal with fish bullies. I'll link the video in this video's description if it can help you out. So that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. Which inbuna is the most peaceful in your aquarium? Tell me about it in the comments section. I'm really curious to know. Is it one from the list? 
Did you see my list and figure, oh my God, I have one of these and they're super aggressive. Tell us about that too. Because like I said in my video, there are exceptions and you can get bad apples sometimes in those. I love reading your stories, even if I don't always answer all the comments in the comment section. So if you like this video, there are plenty more to come. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure not to miss a single one. If you want more fishy content in between my videos, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, on TikTok, and I have a great website where you can shop online and see all the fish I have for sale. With the nice weather coming, I should be able to restart shipping out fish throughout Canada. I don't ship to the US. Also, if you like this fabulous Cyclid Geek t-shirt, Fish Geek is also available. You can get it in my Teespring store. Every shirt you get helps me out and encourages me to continue doing everything that I, it is that I'm doing. So thank you to everyone who encourages me in my Teespring store, in my YouTube channel, and in my actual physical store in Terrebonne, Quebec. So thank you everyone for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.